Like the video for us on the order day is 1.15, Thursday, 16th of February. My name is Brennan Kelch, you'll be chair, along with me is Ms. Cheryl Knox and Ms. Bonnie Jackson. Staff support seat at the DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. Our remote location is Plaquemines Parish. Uh, with staff and support of Plaquemines, please introduce yourself. Yes, sir. My name is Lieutenant Tinsom, Plain Parish Sheriff Department. All right, Lieutenant, we're ready for our first case. Yes, sir. I have Mr. Lee. All right. We also have Ms. Kimmyette uh, Lee, mother, and Tita Jones, godmother. The All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Tyrese Lee, 714 All right, Tyrese. My name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Ms. Jackson and Ms. Renata will be your panel. I'll have a parole hearing for you today. Ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Tyrese Lee, DOC number. 714600, you're a third class offender for a low ability date 10 14 2021, good time 3 15 2026, full term 12 27 2026, uh, on an eight year sentence. Possession attempt to distribute cocaine, legal use of a weapon, convicted felon. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. Please answer, Mr. All right, Mr. Lee, uh, you've been through this process before. You appeared before a parole panel in July of 21. Yes, ma'am. And at that time, you were denied. And I noticed on the on the uh, decision, it said because you needed programs, you had law enforcement opposition, and you had a poor supervision history. So since July of 2021, what programs have you been able to take advantage of? Um, I've taken moral recognition therapy. I've taken cage of rage, and I've taken um uh, this carpentry carpentry class. I have my SCCR card. Oh, good. Okay. So, um, you were your conviction was for, uh, of course, the firearms charges very concerning. But you had the drug charge possession as a habitual offender possession. What have you done? about your drug use and abuse? Um, well, I haven't been able to take any programs as far as the um, substance abuse because they say that you have to be um, two years under at this facility. Two years or under? You yes. have, didn't have the programs there? What kind of substance abuse program they have there, do you know? Uh, no, ma'am. So uh, what was your drug of choice? Was it just cocaine? No, no, that doesn't have my drug of choice as use. I, I just smoke marijuana. So why are we selling cocaine? Uh, well, for money. Do you have any understanding of the impact you had on the people that you sold it to? Yes, ma'am. I actually see every day on the news, I've noticed that you know a lot of drug overdoses, and I see how selling drugs impacts the community, and it also kills the people that you tend to, you know, tend to love, and it really it destroys the community. I have I have noticed how drugs affect the community. And it wasn't until you were in prison that you figured that out. Mr. Lay. Come back. Okay. Did we make it back? Y'all froze up on us last time. Yeah, we had a, a power surge that came throughout the building, so they knocked our internet and stuff out of out of line. So we're back up and running up. So Mr. Lee is right here. All right. Lee. <laughs> All right, I think we were in the middle of asking some questions, weren't we? Yes. And we were resuming. We, we talked, Mr. Lee, about the programs that, you, um, that you've taken since your last hearing. And I was about, before we lost you, I was about to tell you about the opposition from the district attorney's office. Um, 
their strong op opposition and he believes he the da's office believes that you need to complete a long-term substance abuse treatment program and lacking that you'd like to return to a criminal lifestyle how do you feel about that statement um, I, I feel biased towards it because i know that i now understand the effect that drugs have in the community and i, I never had the chance to actually sit down and look at how my drug dealing was affecting the community until now by me being in jail. You don't believe you could benefit from, from uh, such a program? I believe I can benefit from any program. Yes, ma'am, I do. Well, I mean, if you don't want to do it, you're not going to participate. It's not going to do anything. No, I will, I will participate in any program because I know that any program will help me out, but I don't actually honestly feel like that I would need to do it because I know, you know, I understand the effect that I have on the community if I go back to selling drugs or anything like that. Are you currently enrolled in any programs? Did you tell me? I didn't make a note of What are you uh, in there? No, ma'am. I, I, no, ma'am. I'm not currently enrolled in any programs. I'm enrolled in college right now. I'm actually um in college. But I for a sponsor? Uh, yeah, Ashland University. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right. Ever had a mental health evaluation? Yes, ma'am. And was was there any diagnosis? I think I did it in here. I think I, um the only one I took was the tiger assessment. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you've never seen like a a, a social worker oh, on a regular Okay. No, um. All right. I don't have any questions. All right. We'll hear from Ms. Uh, Kimiette Lee. Ms. Lee, yeah, on mute. Hi, hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? Good, go ahead. Um, I'm Tyrese's mother, Tyrese. Um, I feel like that Tyrese has the ability to do what he needs to do um, to get out. Um, Tyrese is a great kid. I know he had had some um, inabilities in the prior years going now, but now I really believe, truly feel and believe that he's learned his lesson. And I really feel and believe that he's gonna do the right thing if you guys was to grant him parole today. Um, he has an, a house to live in. Um, he's going to be living with me. That's not going to be any problem. And he also has um, a job lined up, set up for him. And also, I'm going to make sure that he um, finishes college courses, um, which I know he's going to do that on his own also. But I'm just there for his, you know, just to be there for him. And I really think he's going to do good if you guys just grant him parole today. I think he's really, really learned his lesson. All right. Thank you for your comment. Thank you so much. Thank okay. Keita Jones. Hi, can you hear me? Can. Okay, perfect. My name is Mikeita. I am Tyrese's godmom. Um, I've had a, a huge influence in his life throughout the years that I have been in their life. Um, he has chosen to go down the right path, of course, is something that I did not agree with at that time. But seeing him over the last year, definitely, I've seen a big improvement in him overall. He's gotten closer to God. That's something that I really, you know, do agree with him on. And I do appreciate that he did take my advice to do so. Um, just in general, just speaking to him, I can tell that he's now on a different mindset in his life. And I feel as if he's ready to be able to be a man now. He's, you know, had trouble as a young man going through, but I don't want him to turn out to be what today's society of a young black man is to be. So um, I've taken, you know, my matters into effect to where I help him personally over to what I can over the phone. Um, but when he is to be released and come home, we will have everything set up to him to continue to stay on the right path, whether we have to get continuing therapy for him to make sure that he stays in college to get a good job for him to be able to keep him on the correct path and not into where he's in that lane where he'll, you know, be able to be badly influenced once again. But I do hope that you all can consider it because I do believe that he's ready and he's realized, you know, his rights from wrong at this point. 
I thank you for your comment. Thank you. Of course, thank you. All right, Tyrez, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Um, yes, sir. Uh, I know that growing up and living in the community where I come from, you can easily be influenced, but I don't blame that on my decisions that I made in life. I blame myself because that I know that I could have made the right decisions. And I now understand that, you know, living in that type of lifestyle can only lead you to two different outcomes in life that are inevitable. And that's either in prison forever or either dead. And those are, and, and those are two outcomes that I do not want for my life. All right, thank you so much for your comment. Mr. Lee, you're a young man. You're a third felony offender. I like what you said about you finally come to the realization that you had on those who spent on your you know, I was a little disappointed and didn't express really express substance abuse uh, treatment. But, uh, I, I believe, and I'm, I'm so um, impressed with the support you have from your godmother and mother. You're, you're very lucky in that regard. I'm glad that you're enrolled in college, National University. I think you're, you're, you're uh, coming to the real station um, where you're turning it over. I just think the benefit of additional programming prior to the week, uh, particularly substance abuse. So I'm, today's not the day for me. I'm not ready based on our discussion and the opposition been expressed. You know, to deny the parole, but encourage you to uh, don't let it set you back to work reapply with All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, fully, um, I agree that this is not that you have to do. I really have to um, really with if now you get to some more programming. Uh, I, I think you really need to take victim awareness. So even though you say you recognize some harm in the community, don't know that you really can fully grasp that. And so uh, I'm going to encourage you to keep working. Don't get discouraged. You know, mark of whether you really reach is how you respond to a negative outcome of that. If you allow it to be an excuse to fall back and to not go forward, then that tells you yourself that you're not ready. But uh, today my vote is to deny, but I am encouraged. I am encouraged. I think we started the process of change, so I'm going to ask you to stay on that course. But you have two votes to deny your parole. Look, I was impressed with what you what you said. I was impressed with the support you have. I would have voted today to grant your parole uh, with some outpatient uh, rehab. But you know, you're right there close, man. You're real close. Keep your head up. Keep going. Uh, you, you next time the outcome might be different. But you have two votes to deny, one to grant. Now your parole's been denied. Good luck, to Kelsey, you, Okay, Mr. Kelsey, One thing. Yeah. Is there any way? Is there any way that you can um? help me get into these programs because this jail does not allow it if you got two years of unless you're two years or less. We're gonna make it we're gonna put it on our notes. We're gonna make a note to, to for them to override put you in uh in the classes. All right, because they did it last time and then they 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 still no no classes. Well, I didn't do it last time so we'll override it and get it done. Yes sir. 